Has God been good to anybody the last few weeks? Yeah. Well, it's good to see you this morning. Good to have you join us online on podcast. Well done. You made it to 2022. Who would have thought? You know, when I was a kid growing up and it was 1960, 2022 was just something off, off a science fiction movie that was kind of way off could be anywhere. Incredible. Well done, you've made it. And uh, just to echo my wife's words, thank you so much for your generosity over Christmas to us. And for those online, thank you. With all the people who give and tithe this, this church and this ministry, thank you so much again. For We never take it for granted when people give and when people support. Um, so it's our, it's our way of saying thank you. you know, I don't send cards. I just, I just say thank you. <laughs> thank you. So good. It's good to see you. Well, we're pressing, there's a button on my phone for the time, but it says, because last time I preached was the carol service, and it was 14 minutes. Well, I'm pressing the reset button this morning. It's not 14 minutes this morning, guys. We're pressing the restart in a new year. We're pressing the reset button, and we're starting all over again. All over again this year. I've got to start with a new series, new, a new series of messages. And not just because it's a new year, but because um, I'm saying in faith this morning, it's a new season. Okay, a new season, it's a new year, and so it's all that kind of stuff put together. So you've got pen and paper, if, you got, if you're writing notes down on phones and iPads and all that kind of stuff on your hand or whatever it might be. The title this morning is this, In With The Old and In With The New. In With The Old and In With The New. You see, the, the saying, what people say, don't they? People say, out with the old and in with the new. You know, thinking about a new year, 2022, and all that, New Year's, and January, that kind of stuff, and it's a new month, it's a new year. People say, out with the old and in with the new. But what I'm saying this morning, I'm, I'm contradicting that, and I'm saying, in with the old and in with the new. So I'm going to explain that over the next couple of weeks and and from a Bible verse or Bible verses in Exodus. So I'm going to read from Exodus chapter 10, verses 8 to 10 from the New King James. Exodus chapter 10, verses 8 to 10. And I'm going to do a, a stop and start read just for this week, just to kind of give you some background and give you some kind of, uh, just, just to... Just to fill in some gaps and to, but after, after this I won't be stopping and starting with the reading, I'll just be reading through, but I want to stop and start this week a little bit. This is the, um, the children of Israel are, are, are in exile, they're in Egypt, they're under an evil dictator called Pharaoh, made to, to do hard work, etc, etc, and, and they're away from home and they chop, you know the story, they've been in prison for hundreds of years, and, um, and so this, God finally raises up somebody Aren't you glad that God raises up people to encourage you? God finally raised somebody up to encourage the children of Israel to, to bring a message and to bring support and to confront the enemy in front of them. And I think that's what leaders do. Leaders are called not just to, not just to preach and, and, and be nice people. I think you know, leaders are called to, to confront the enemy on your behalf. And say, right, okay, it's time you took your hands off these people. It's time that sickness went. It's time that poverty went. It's time that illness went. And that's what we, we do all week. We, we, we intervene. If you wonder what we do all week, we intervene on your behalf. As well as preparing messages and all that kind of stuff and meeting people up and that stuff as well. But God finally raised somebody up. God raised Moses up to confront Pharaoh. Um, you, you know the story when he said, you know, let my people go, set my people free. And this is, this is the, um, the eighth time he's done this. Okay, so this is the eighth time. There's already been seven plagues. And this is the eighth plague that God is going to call upon Pharaoh and, and Egypt and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so he's been through this before. And so Exodus chapter 8, verses 8 to 10. And so, remember, this is the eighth time. You know, some people are just so thick. That they need telling eight times before they actually do anything. Of course, you don't know people like that. All the people you talk to do things the first time. So Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh. 
And Pharaoh said to them, go, you see, he got so sick of them. He said, go serve the Lord your God. Listen to this. Who are the ones that are going? Who, who, who's going with you? Who are the ones that are going? And I think, if I'm just going to stop there at, at the first verse, verse 8, I think that's a great question. I never thought about it before until this morning. It wasn't part of my notes that I prepared during the week for this morning. I just thought about this. That's a great question. So who are the ones that are going with you, Moses? It's a great question because what he's saying, he's saying what I want to say to you this morning is, who and what are you taking from what you've been through? What are you taking from what you've been through? Because you do know that when we go through something, we're supposed to take something out of that, whatever we go through. And, and, and so Pharaoh said to Moses, what are you taking from what you've been through and, and where you've been? And I, I think that's a great question to ask people this morning. Um, on the first Sunday of a new year, in the first month of a new year, what are you taking from what you've been through? And this is not part of the, the mere message, this is just me kind of throwing in things um, to interpret what, what, what Pharaoh said to Moses. Who are the ones that are going? What are you taking from where you've been? Because some of you in, in 2021 were in places that were uncomfortable. Uh, am I right? There, there were some people here who really, and watching or listening, and maybe still really struggled with, with the pandemic and what was going on and all the rules changing and all the isolations and all the, all the, the rules and the lockdown. Some people really struggled. So the question this morning is this, you know, when you struggled with something, what are you taking from what you've been through? You didn't go through something for nothing, right? You weren't ill for nothing. You weren't sick for nothing. You, you, weren't, you weren't struggling with the job and with finance for nothing. You, you weren't attacked for nothing. Are you with me? So, so Moses, is, so Pharaoh was saying to Moses, this great question, he says, what are you taking from where you've been. In other words, in other words, the question is this, and my question to you this morning is this, what did you learn? What did you learn from what you went through? Those, those who went through something. What, what did you learn from where you were? There were some people that last year who, who suffered with, um, with depression. And, and with being down and, and that, that and anxiety and stress. Uh, and my question this morning on the first Sunday in January is what did you learn? Because you did not go through that for nothing. Nobody goes through anything for nothing. We are meant to take something from it. Who are the ones that are going? What did you learn? You know, when... When you're traveling, you, you learn things from traveling, right? Those of you who've, who've traveled, who've stayed in hotels, um, you, you've, you've learned things, right? So, you know, so, so, so we have, we, we, we like, we absolutely love traveling. And one thing we've missed through the last couple of years is traveling. We absolutely, we've made the, the most of what we could do. So, you know, when, when we go to London, when we go to Paris and we travel, we, we, we learn and you learn things. You learn things about hotels, right? And so I've learned from bad experiences in hotels and from me putting bad reviews and me complaining. I've learned, right, when I go to certain hotels, I'll ask for the top floor. Because on the floors underneath, all you can hear is a pitter patter, a big, heavy, thudding feet on your ceiling from one o'clock in the morning. So I've asked for the top floor, right? You learn. You learn from what you've been through. And I ask for a room that's nowhere near the lift. Or is it saying in America, the elevator? 
nowhere near the lift because during the night the lift goes all night. You know, it's, see, you learn, see, you learn, don't you? You, 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 just, you, just, you just learn. I've learned when traveling to travel light. I could easily do three nights taking a carrier bag. Is anybody with me? <laughs> no. Because for three nights you need nine pairs of shoes, right? Is, is that right? Men don't. Men can wear the same shoes, socks. Uh, do you want me to go on? Uh, for three nights. So we, we, I, could, I could easily, easily take, a, take a, a carrier bag for three nights. Probably a hold off for three weeks. You just learn to travel light. You know, what have you learned from what you've been through? Well, one thing I've learned from traveling through bad experiences is, is I always take my own pillow. I'm like a five-year-old child who walks through the hotel or walks through the apartment or walks through the house and I'm the one carrying my own pillow. I've had this pillow for years. But I have learned that hotel pillows are rubbish. They kill your neck. You sink into them. You can't get out of them. The pillow comes around your face. They're so soft. I hate them. So I take, and the ones in, 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 um, in Airbnb places as well, I just, I just sometimes like a, like, a, like a cushion. So I've learned to take my own pillow. You see, I've had so many sleepless nights and so many bad necks. What have you learned from what you went through? What have you learned? What, what are you taking away from what you've been through? That's what Pharaoh is saying to Moses. Well, what are you taking away? You know, who are you taking with you? What are you taking away from what you've been through and where you've been? When you went through that season, try and remember a season that you went through. And it was a hard season. It was a barren season. Maybe you're there right now. I don't know. Maybe you're not through it yet. It was a sick season. It was a sad season. It was a grieving season. It was a worrying season. It was a stressful season. And you went through that season. You did not go through and you are not going through that season right now for nothing. You are going through that season. You went through that season to learn something. What did you learn? What are you taking away from that time? What are you taking away from 2021? 2021 was not a pointless year. What did you learn? So he says, so, forth, so, so Pharaoh says to Moses, who are the ones that are going? What have you learned? What, what, you know, what are you taking away? And in verse 9, Moses gives an even better answer. And this is where I got my, my title from. Moses said... We will go with our young and our old. We will go with the new and we will go with the old. We will go with our young and our old. I'm not talking about this this week. In a few weeks time I might be talking about this. But when he says we're going with our young and our old, can I just give you some advice this morning? As I'm going somewhere with this message next couple of weeks. Don't throw out everything that is old. Don't throw out everything that is old. If, if you think all things are irrelevant and don't have a place in 2022, you obviously haven't watched the Antiques Roadshow. Well, we haven't watched it either, so I've, I've heard about it. Or, or the repair shop. The repair shop's probably a bit... People, people have these old things that they hang on to, and people say, oh, get rid of it. Throw it out. It's no good not using it anymore. It's useless. Buy, buy new. Get, get a new one. But people, people hold on to these old teapots and these, and these old trinkets and these old, old pictures and these old vases and things, and they arrive at Antiques Roadshow, and like they're worth fifteen thousand pounds, or like twenty thousand pounds, because they're antiques. Hey, there's nothing wrong with old, right? 
Look at me. There's nothing wrong with the Lord. Don't throw out everything that is old. It's very easy. It's very easy to say, well, it's all about the young people. It's all about new things. But what Moses said this, Moses said, we will go with our young, yeah, and we will go with our old. There's some good things in old. And all the over 50 said, we can learn from the old. I'm telling you, church, we can, we, we can learn from the old. We can learn there are some old things that we need to carry through to 2022. Yes, I'm all for new, and we want new, and we all want a new experience, and we all want a new touch, and we all want a new, a new breath of heaven. I am really, really, we need new songs. But I am also convinced that we need the old as well. There's some stuff I need to bring through from 2021 and not discard it and not throw it away. That's why Moses said, hey, you know what? We're not just taking the young. As pretty as they are and as good as they are and, and as youthful as they are and, and how we like new things. He said, imagine we're not just taking the new, we're taking the old as well. In with the old and in with the new. And so, verse 10 this is like a stoppy start. You read this this week. Don't worry about it. It's, I'll get into it more next week. I'm kind of laying a foundation this week. And verse 10, then, Mo, then Pharaoh said to them, he says a funny thing. You know, people say weird things. He said to them, the Lord had better be with you when I let you and your little ones go. What kind, what kind of language is that? What kind of, what kind of wording is that? He says, that the Lord had better be with you when I let you go. It, it, sounds, it sounds a bit like my mum. When I was kind of 10 or 11, and, and, and my mum my, my would say to me, you better not coming to, come running to me, Ella David. When you break your leg playing football, you better not come running to me. It's a funny kind of thing to say, isn't it? You know, the Lord had better be with you. And he says, beware, for evil is ahead of you. Does that, any of that sound familiar to anybody? Has anybody heard any, anything that might bring fear to us recently? You know, any of that sound negative? Anybody heard anything miserable recently? Anybody heard any, any, any things of doom recently? Anybody heard of any fear spreading recently? You know, you're trying to be optimistic and, and we're all revving ourselves up and trying to look forward and especially we as Christians, believers and church people, which we, we try and look forward, right? We're trying to, we're trying to be faith-filled and then we read and we hear it's going to get worse before it gets better. You'd better get ready. The Lord had better be with you. Tough times ahead. We're all going to be worse off in 2022. More variants are probable. You will need a fourth job. You'll need to wear a mask when you're asleep in bed. Oh, Pharaoh, shut up. Do I just want to say sometimes to people, oh, just shut up. Do you want to shout at the TV sometimes? Oh, Pharaoh, shut up. If I wasn't a saved, sanctified Christian, there were a few other phrases that I could use, but um, I'm saying with shut up. Oh, Pharaoh, shut up. And then uh, I read this verse again in the original translation. Because that just sounded to me, that, that sounded weird. The Lord had better be with you when I let you go because there's evil ahead. And so I read the original King James. And the original King James, Exodus 10, 9. And Pharaoh said to them, let the Lord be so with you. That sounds so much better to me. I like that so much better. Let the Lord be so with you. And that, 
what is strange about it, I like it, but what's so strange about it, it's coming from the mouth of an enemy of God. Isn't that strange? Somebody who's trying to block God, somebody who's persecuting believers, says to the believers, let the Lord be so with you. Can anybody say amen to that this morning? Can anybody recognize that the Lord be so with you this year? Let him not be with you, just be, let him be so with you. We are so glad, God. We are so blessed. We are so favored. May the Lord be so with you. In every storm this year, in every storm, in every season, in every attack, in every battle, in every trap, every obstacle, every giant you might face. You know what, church, my prayer, my honest prayer, and I'll be praying this every, every day for you. May the Lord be so with you. Despite what's coming from the TV, despite what's coming from media, despite what pops up on your phone, despite what, what comes through on, in newspapers, you know, whatever, shut up, Pharaoh, just shut up. Shut up, devil, trying to scare people and frighten people. My, I'm going to come back with this every time. May the Lord be so with you. Because if the Lord is so with us, what shall we fear? What shall make us nervous? What shall make us stressful? What shall make us frightened? If the Lord is so with us, may the Lord be so with you guys this morning on the podcast, watching on whatever you watch on every step of the way, in with the new and in with the old. We will go with our young, Moses said, the new, and we will go with our old. You see, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure that God works so much in years. I don't think when the bells rang in 2022, it actually meant that much to God. I'd I don't, I'm not sure that God works in years. From my experience and from the Bible, God, God seems to work in seasons. And, and God seems to work in times. And, and God seems to work in moments. That, so, you know, in one year, we can have five or six seasons in a year. Have you found that? You can have five or six seasons. You can have a season where you are absolutely blessed out of your socks. You can have a season when you are sick. You can have a season when you're in need. You can have a season of uncertainty. You can have a season that, that is, is a pressured season. And when you look back over your life, there haven't, haven't been years, there have been seasons. Or we can have a season that lasts for a whole year. Sometimes... A season can last for a year, and that is great. If you're in a season of blessing, you don't want it to end, do you? When you're in a season of blessing, or when you're in a season of favor, when you're in a season of plenty, you never want it to end. So you say, bring it on, God, give me, give me a whole year. Who would this morning love to have a whole year of plenty? You would love to have a whole year that's a season of favor. A whole year when, when you are healthy and when you are blessed and when you are looked after. Bring it on, but it's not so great if we're in a season of pain. We don't want a whole year of pain. We don't want a whole year of luck. We don't want a whole year of struggle. So when Pharaoh said to Moses, when you leave here, when you leave 2021, who are the ones that are going? What are you taking with you? And Moses' answer was, we will go with our young, we will go with the new, and we will go with the old. We'll go with both. We'll go with young and old, new and old. And, you know, we're going into this new, this new time. We're going into this new season. Some of us are going into new battles this year. People are going into new storms. 
People are going into new things. Now, you know, we are believing as a church for a new thing from God, that God's going to do a new thing. By that, I mean a fresh thing. I don't mean anything weird or anything, anything that, that's not of God, but God, you know, God do, do something new. Do something fresh. We need a fresh wind. How many people can say amen to we need a fresh wind? I don't want an old wind that blew 40 years ago. We need a fresh wind this morning, a fresh wind this year. And, and we're going into this new thing, in with the new, and what? And in with the old. You know, I was, and before I get, before I finish, I pray every day for the church for, for a long time. I think about the church every day. And, and one of the things that I, I pray for, I pray, I pray for three things in priority. But what I believe, I don't, know, I don't know how you pray for the church. I hope you pray for the church at least, at least once a year when you pray for the church. But I pray every single day for a long time about the church. I, 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 pray in, I pray for three things in what I believe are the priorities. Number one, I pray for people. Because people are always the priority. Are you with me? Do you understand that? Secondly, I pray for finance, because without finance we can't do church. And thirdly, I pray for buildings and venues. Because God has given us a venue, but I always believe for the next venue. So I'm kind of in the next venue while we're still in this venue. And I, am, I have prayed and prayed and prayed and still praying and still praying and still believing and sharing with people that I am believing for, for, for a venue as a gift that somebody will gift us a venue, will say to us, you can have this venue, it's yours, do what you will, and it's free. Is that too far? Is that too out, out? Is that too, is that too much? Is that too much to believe? Is that kind of way out there? Is that, is that fantasy? I don't believe it is. But then I began to pray for you. You know, first of all, I began to pray for you. I began to pray for every person who comes to this church and who watches online. I, I prayed for you. And God gave me a word for somebody. It's nothing, nothing at all to do with this message. And God gave me just three words for people this morning who are needing something from God. Three words. Are you listening? You might want to jot this down so at the end of the year you can check to see whether this actually happened. Three words that God gave me as I'm walking along and praying for people are these. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. And I want us to test this this year. Because I believe, I believe that there are people who are going to get jobs out of of nowhere. It's just going to come. The job is just going to come. There are people who are going to get promotions out of nowhere. You did not see it coming. There are people who are going to get finance that you so desperately need out of nowhere. There are said this morning, there are people who are going to have babies looking beyond the front row and maybe the second row, I don't know. I'm not sure about the second row, like I'm, I might quite believe for the second row. I can believe for the rest. Out of nowhere. Can you see what I mean this morning? There are people who are going to get healed out of nowhere. Just didn't see it coming. Anybody can believe, I can believe for that this year. Cause I, cause I, cause I know God. I've walked with God. I believe God. I pray God. So when God gives me a word for people, and I don't know who it's for, or what, it, or what it's in relation to, that, that something is something good is coming your way, something blessed is coming your way, something that you need and you prayed for and believed for and are desperate for and cried for is coming your way this year out of nowhere. 
I even looked for a Bible verse and there isn't one. So I thought, is this, is this a message I've got to prepare? There isn't a Bible verse for that. There's an experience for it. Because we've seen God come out of nowhere, supply out of nowhere. And my, my prayer before, before long, sooner rather than later, is that something is coming to you out of nowhere. That's what God can do. God's going to do it because God can do it. In within you and in with you. I haven't even got to any points this morning. I'm just laying the foundation. And I'll start proper next week on this message. But there are people who need to hear this. There are people who need to take something from what you've been through and where you've been. And some of that stuff is old stuff. Thank God for new this morning. But hey, thank God for the old as well. Amen. Can anybody believe it? Thank God for new blessings. And thank you, God, for all blessings. Thank you for new faithfulness. And thank you for old faithfulness. Thank you for new favor this morning. And thank you for old favor. Come on, let's stand. Let me pray for you. You're so encouraging. Thank you. I'm praying you'll be like a sponge. You will just soak up this message and learn something and receive something. And Father, will you bless people this year? Thank you for faithful people, for great people, for faith-filled people. Thank you. I am praying, God, those three words that you gave me for people. I'm praying this year that out of nowhere, blessing will come, deliverance will come, healing will come, restoration will come, salvation will come to people we're praying for out of nowhere. The jobs will come out of nowhere. Promotions and finance out of nowhere. We commit this year to you, God, in Jesus' name. and looking forward to it, to be blessed. Everybody said, Amen. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday.